Beloved, it is my delight to welcome you to this Sunday broadcast. It is my pleasure on the God's grace and privilege that we share this time to thank God for bringing us to this platform again. And this Sunday, we are going special again by the grace of God. So I want to encourage you at this moment once again, please uh, do well to invite somebody to join this means of grace, to enjoy what God has in store for us on today's uh, broadcast. So whichever channel that you are joining us with, please do well to share the link uh, to invite somebody to this special occasion that we are having in today's broadcast. And I'm trusting the Lord to minister life unto us and to all marriages in particular that shall be connecting to today's broadcast. Let's share a word of prayer together before we go into today's broadcast. Lord, we want to thank you for the opportunity to meet again in your presence this Sunday to meditate, to pray, to seek your face and to be ministered to in every dimension that you have in store for us today. May your name alone be praised in the name of Jesus. Lord, in today's occasion, you have something in mind for marriages. And so, Lord, we pray that your hand will be released upon today's ministration and everyone connecting to this broadcast, either married or not married, you will open their eyes of understanding to the dimension of what you are releasing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' unfailing name, we have prayed. Amen. Like I said, today's broadcast is going special, and I, we have an impression of the Spirit of the Lord to share with marriages again one of the powerful, exciting sessions we had earlier this year in our engagement Sunday. The engagement Sunday was focused on marriage and it's a blessing to both those who are married and those who are yet to be married. In fact, more importantly for them because of the counsel that comes from that teaching. And so by the grace of God, today I'll be bringing a rebroadcast part one of that session that we have on the topic, the marriage vow. The marriage vow has been a lot of issue in our generation, a lot of interpretation, a lot of the way people per, you know, perceive it in their own way. But we're trusting the Spirit of the Lord to oh, unveil unto us in the next two Sundays what the marriage vow you know, is all about. So today's broadcast, I'll be bringing to you part one of that session of the marriage vow you know, as uh, expansiated by the Spirit of God through our guests that we had in the studio that time. Uh, earlier this year, we have Mommy and DJ. You, you got details, the Celestines and, and uh, very reverend from UK, Nigeria, and Canada. So you get that detail as I bring the rebroadcast to you in, in a short while. But before we go into that, something just struck my spirit as I was preparing and meditating for today's broadcast. And that is in Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. And I'll just read verse 4 and verse 7. And that's what the Lord just laid my spirit, you know, to say something to us. I, I, I don't know who that word is for, and I want to strongly believe that the word is also for me. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 4 and 7, it says, that this is God speaking to Abraham. He said, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. I read verse 7. He said, and I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your descendants after you, in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. I see this covenant coming live to my spirit as I'm preparing for this broadcast. God said in that last part of verse 7, he said for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. I, I, I see God raising an issue of covenant relationship with you and especially in your marriage. 
you cannot afford to take your marriage for granted marriage is 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 a covenant mandate that the lord doesn't play with it's one of the precious institution in the hand of god that nothing can be compared to it and that is why at this moment i, I sense in my spirit that the lord is saying something to you and your children i, I don't know if you are the sound of my voice you are having issues in your marriages and possibly the issue that you are having your marriage had to do with your parents the way things went with them but the lord is saying if at this moment you will come in a covenant relationship with him you know that matter will not be transferred to your children and he says i will be your god and also the god to your descendants after you and that's the dimension of the things that i sense strongly in my spirit that the lord is raising at this point in time. i said behold my covenant shall be with you i, I want to encourage your heart either you are married or not married and particularly those of us who are not married that you will strike a deal of a covenant with the lord that lord by my marriage that will impact upon my descendants. I want to work with you by covenant. So I, I, I don't have details, but this thing just come into my spirit that my covenant I will establish. Yes, I see God intending to establish covenant with people, covenant with marriages. And if things have gone bad or wrong or challenging in your marriage, I, you can reenact a covenant here today as you partake in this broadcast. So I, I want to encourage you to take time to listen to meditate there are so many things you will write i'm listening to this teaching again and again uh, and it's a blessing to my spirit so there are quite a number of things the lord will be opening your eyes to from this teaching and i want you to take note and i will also take note in the course of time uh, and in in the respect to that I want to encourage you, whatever platform you are joining, particularly with the landbroadcast.online.church on YouTube or our Facebook page, we are, we're going to engage you also in chat. You can drop your questions on the chat. Somebody is going to respond to you, you know, through the chat. And if there are things we need to discuss over again, you will have link to discuss with us all over again. And if there are things, issues you felt you want to discuss, you know, with our guest that is going to be handling this uh, that session, Either you are in the UK or you are in Nigeria or you are in Canada, by the grace of God, we might also trust God to link you up with them if you need a direct communication, a direct session of counsel with them. And that will be done by the grace of God. So I want to encourage you to open your heart for this covenant that God is opening up today. I will establish my covenant between you and your descendant between you and your descendant i tell you yes your marriage may be challenging i, I sense in my spirit somebody you're having a fear that the way your marriage has been challenging you are having a fear that the same will continue with your children but the lord said on this platform today if you will strike a covenant with him it will establish a covenant between you and him and also your descendant and that which is your fear god is going to take care of it you will not have such issue in the name of the lord jesus and so by the reason of the covenant that is above every other covenant i raise the covenant of the calvary to re repair to restore every marriage that is broken down in the name of Jesus. And everyone at the sound of my voice that you are trusting the Lord to establish a co marriage covenant as you are single, the Lord will open your eyes to instruction as we share together and we make a covenant with you and your generation in the name of Jesus. There is nothing compared to you working with God in a covenant relationship. It takes things far beyond you. And that is what we are trusting God to minister to you in the name of Jesus. So sit back. Let's listen to this ministration together as we trust the Lord to minister life unto us, even on this platform, on what he has in mind for us, even through this session. Uh, it, it, it was a powerful session. And uh, I want to trust the Lord that you would be blessed by the reason of this teaching in the name of Jesus. So join me as we go into that studio of the Engagement Sunday to take that Marriage Vow Session Part 1.
So going straight away to introduce our guest, please, uh, let's go along with this introduction. Mrs. Christiana Adeju Igwe was born over six decades ago. She dedicated her life to God and worked as a drama minister in her early years before getting married to her husband, Mr. Gwenga Adeju Igwe, of blessed memory, for over 32 years. Holds a degree in agriculture science and has taught the same subject for several years before she retired from government service. She and her late husband were called into the Ministry of Marriage Counseling for about 30 years now, having counseled thousands of Nigerian single youths and couples and mentored them on the journey to their successful and happy homes. Though the ministry did not carry a name, but has registered impact on the lives of people without denomination boundaries, especially in Nigeria Fellowship of Evangelical Students, NIFES, across colleges and universities in Nigeria. She is a successful mother of four big boys, one of whom is in training for the ministry of the gospel in the Anglican Communion in Nigeria. She is also taking interest in writing in recent times, having authored some books. She is one of the valiant vessels God is using to shape homes in Nigeria and ensure the pattern for sustainable marriage is preserved in this age. Her motherly counsel and wealth of experience through the Holy Spirit will create an impact in our discussion today. You are welcome, Ma, to the studio of the Lamb Broadcast. Brant and Celeste Trickett are the National Directors of Family Life Canada's Home Builder and Church Partnership Strategy. They speak at marriage and family conferences and mentor couples to grow in their own marriages while challenging them to encourage the couples they know to know Jesus and grow in their relationships. The Trickets served in university ministry for 15 years before they began ministering to couples. They enjoy teaching people to live in the power of the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of God's Word. Married in the year 2000, the Trickets have four children ages 17, 15, 13, and 11. They live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. The Trickets' favorite verse to pray over their children in Canadian marriages is from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that we won't be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our mind. Their passion is to help others experience the joy of bringing help and hope to the marriages and families in their community. With delight, we welcome the Trickets once again to our studio. Very Reverend Dr. Deji Okegbile is a chaplain, Nigerian Methodist chaplain to UK Ireland, and is also the minister in charge of Askew Road Church, Methodist and United Reformed, in the Chelsea, Hammersmith and Fulham Circuit, London, United Kingdom. He served as the Pioneer Chaplain, State House Chapel, Lagos House Marina, Lagos State, Nigeria. He was formerly the minister in charge of Rainham and Avery Methodist local churches, Romford Circuit, London District. The Conference Editor, Editor Methodist News, Official Organ, Methodist Church, Nigeria. He was the Pioneer Presiding Chaplain. Chapel of Christ the Light, Interdenominational Lagos State Secretariat, Alausa Ikeja, Lagos. In his ministry as a priest, he has solemnized holy matrimonies and partaken in several others as part of the officiating ministers. This has brought him in contact with would-be couples for premarital counseling. He is a prolific writer and you can engage with this article on his blog, the Deji Okegbila blog at dejiokegbila.com. As a husband, a pastor, teacher, and theological scholar, we believe the Lord to breathe on his perspective to minister to us today. 
Welcome with us, the very Reverend Dr. Deji Okegwila. Welcome, that is our guest to this year's engagement uh, Sunday, the marriage discourse. And um, they are all in the studio. Let me uh, try to show a clearer view of them as uh, my studio we allow. I guess you can see them. Uh, so those are the guests we have seen uh, on the introduction. Um, Mommy Adeji Bay from Nigeria. Then we have uh, Brent and Celestine from Canada with us here. You're welcome to our studio. And also we have very Reverend Dr. DG. Okay, Bile, who is joining us from the United Kingdom. So it is a pleasure to have you all around uh, at this point in time. And before we go into uh, the questions and answer session. Uh, our guests, they are going to give us um, their opening speech, but before then, uh, we like to say that uh, the body for this meeting and the team that we are having, you know, it's something that is amplifying our spirit as we join in, in our commitment and calling to marriage ministry. Uh, over the time, we have seen several issues that call to question the uh, marriage covenant, the vow that was shared when we get wedded. And it's over that period that we, as we meditate and prepare for this year, that the Lord will want us to discuss uh, the issue about the covenant. There are so many historical backgrounds that I would not want to burden you with, but we just have this burden in our heart that god what is it about this vow that we share is it anything meaningful to marriages why do we say all these words is it having any impact in marriage in our generation so these are quite a number of things that bodies are had which we felt like it's important by guidance of the spirit as the lord will help us to estray what the marriage vow is all about so that that's a little background to to the team uh of this year's marriage discourse so having said that i, I want to uh bring in um guests to give us their opening speech and then from there we zoom off to question and answers as we have here and wherever platform that you are joining also you can throw in your question into the chat and we trust god to minister to those situations so thank you once again uh for for joining us yeah you know brent and celeste i would say you are the host and because you are the host so you have to go first before nigeria <laughs> speaks and then we come back to the united kingdom so being the host, can you give us an opening speech shortly about your impression on the team uh, of this year's discourse? A welcome, a welcome to and Okay, well, thank you so okay, much. Well, thank you so much. Having, having, uh, we just really appreciate your heart for marriages, your heart to bless people. And yeah, Brent and I have been so blessed to work with Family Life Canada. Um, we actually... I had a bit of a rocky start as far as when we were younger and in our relationship. So to us, it's just a, just a work of God, even that we're able to have a great, healthy marriage now and be able to help bring help and hope to other couples as well. Yeah. And we had so much fun last year. We're looking forward to a, a really great time this year and talking about the marriage vows. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important that we talk about the marriage vows because um, I, I don't think that's something that we understand as much in our culture and even in the church. Uh, Dr. Gary Chapman, he has a quote that says this, in traditional marriage <laughs> vows, the covenant we make with each other is couched in unconditional terms. Sadly, too many times after couples have verbalized the covenant relationship, they practice a contract in which giving is conditioned to the opposed behavior. 
Yeah. And I would say that we, uh, we tend to live our contracts in our everyday life. So when I go, when we bought our house, uh, we signed a contract that said the house that you're giving us should be the house that is described. And so if they didn't keep their part, we could just walk away from the deal. Or when we buy things from the store, we want it to work properly. So it's a contract. They give us a good piece of uh, a good item and we pay a fair price. And if not, then we can back out of that deal. Yeah, but I looked up the definition of a covenant and it has a much different distinction. It's an agreement which brings about a commitment between God and people. We even think about God and his covenants with Abraham, with Moses, and with David. And so of our marriage covenant, that agreement, we do have to sign some legal documents. So there is that legal contract aspect to it. But for those of us who follow Jesus, even beyond that, we're actually making a covenant before yeah. God. Over to you. <laughs> okay. That's nice. Oh, thank you. We appreciate that. And that's a background uh, into you know um talking about covenant talking about um agreement uh, uh, as the case may be so uh, i want to go over to <clears throat> nigeria uh to have uh mommy adejigwe's perspective uh at this point in time i want okay. the opportunity to give you to be here and part of the program this year I would say sincerely that the topic is a wonderful one because looking at the incidences that are happening in marriage, we feel this one is timely and relevant. Looking at the way marriages, I feel this topic is relevant. Like I want to say that marriage is a covenant, not a contract. It is a covenant, not a contract, because a contract can stop after finishing it or maybe there is an error somewhere but when we talk of marriage it's an ordained institution by god and it's only death that we do them part with that marriage is a covenant not a contract thank you ma and uh, let me quickly go to the uk please thank always you. praise the lord Hallelujah. Yeah. okay okay I'm so sorry. I changed the where I was so that my connection was not stable. Well, I just want to follow what Mama Adedugwe said and my beloved host too, that marriage, according to God's plan, is a vocation, not an hobby. Okay. Marriage is a vocation, not an hobby. That's why the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, a man shall live. It's a call. It's a vocation. It's not just hobby that I like to do. In those days, when life was so simple and prosperous, in fact, the former president of America, Abraham Lincoln, said, the strength of any nation is the home of the people. But today, marriage has become an hobby or be that you can jump in and jump out and that's why things are scattered because we have denied what the bible says in genesis 2 to 18 a man shall live thank you so much sir that is another deep perspective into this discourse wow marriage is not an hobby but a vocation a call a call a call that is deep thank you so much sir yeah and uh, now we want to go to this question because we have taken a lot of time in the interlude and uh, the first question is actually going to um very reverend uh, which i i know his network is still up and down but we trust god that uh, it will work well and uh, i want to I uh, need to take our first question in this session and um, please let's go along. We'll be taking the first question and the first question here for very reverend is in most orthodox um, protestant order of marriage service 
there is a part that talks about the reason slash purpose why marriage was established. Was it this reason that necessitates uh, the reason for us to have a vow that we exchange? Uh, I know it's been, uh, like we said in his introduction, he has solemnized marriages and uh, he has officiated in several other parts. So he will be able to give us perspective uh, in that direction about the purpose and the reason for marriage. Over to you, sir. Uh, well, it's intro, like a call to, it's like a call to worship. So marriage as a vocation it's like any other profession in life. Initiated. Either medical or, or engineering. You will take some oath, a vow of allegiance. So when uh, in the purpose of marriage, when this is declared, is to declare the legality, the spirituality, and the social nature that marriage entails. So that purpose is also built on Genesis 2.18. So it's just a purpose of life. It's like where there's no vision, people perish. So when you come to marriage in the Orthodox setting or Protestant setting, they want to give you a, a, a kind of guide where you are going. It's a call. It's a preparation to a vocation. It's like when you want to travel, you will first need to feel your manifests. And they will tell you whether you are going to stop over somewhere. So I would say that call to purpose is like a manifest of the journey you are about to take. So when we look at that purpose now, it prepares the hearts of the grooms to what they are about to enter into. Purpose of marriage is not that they don't know it now, but they are now legalizing it before people and before God. I mean, you can go to anywhere and say, I want to do this. But the declaration at the beginning is like the beginning of a journey telling you what you're about to do, telling you what you're about to sign into. Because it's a school you receive the certificates before you pass. Now, yeah. and then when you not talk about the Orthodox, you could see that in the 1662-67, when the Western uh, approach to marriage came, the Church of England developed a liturgy for marriage. And that liturgy is based on the scripture. Why? Why are we? It's like when you do ordination for minister, you tell them why the purpose of that ministry. It's like when you call a lawyer to bar, you tell that, you know, those group, and they declare it together. So likewise, marriage is a kind of <coughs> declaration of purpose where there's no vision, people perish, so that the two of you and those in attendance will bear witness. that unless when, you, when they read it to you, are you not satisfied? Maybe you can tell the minister, look, I don't understand this before. But the belief is that you should have understand it before getting to the wedding day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I think you can see the perspective of a priest uh, in that regard and a pastor and, uh, you know, who has been in this business of solemnization. And I appreciate uh, this part of being called to bar you know and the legality that is brought into the understanding that well this is the purpose are you okay with it before you start making declaration and agreement over it i think that's uh, very deep and important for us so for our viewers and everyone uh, all over wherever you are joining us let's take note of that as a lawyer who is being called to bar we take serious the process before taking the oath and knowing what is going into. I think uh, we are receiving a wisdom here that marriage deserves such a level of understanding of the purpose of that marriage before you sign up mm -hmm. into it. That is important for us uh, to take note uh, at this point in time. Okay, thank you so much, sir. <laughs>
uh now we're coming back to to canada and uh, we're going to take uh a question uh for uh the uh the celestine they'll be sharing with us and let me go straight to that uh question right now okay now there is uh also a line in the declaration of purpose as um explained by the very reverend now mm -hmm. that marriage is not what you enter lightly or selfishly but responsively and in love using your personal experience how will you counsel a young person intending to marry on the meaning of this statement that is marriage is not what to enter into lightly or selfishly but responsibly and in love over to you uh the trickets uh I remember my sister, she was the first one in our family to start following Jesus. And I remember her talking to me about how love is a choice. And to me, that was just such a novel idea because I had always thought of love as a feeling. And mm -hmm. actually, researchers have done a lot of studies on what this means, you know, when people talk about being in love or falling out of love. And actually, a better word to use would be infatuation. <laughs> and so they've discovered that there's actually a physiological state that people can be in that lasts about 18 to 24 months where we're infatuated or, you know, in love with someone. And at that point, we tend to overemphasize the, their good qualities and really not think at all about their negative qualities. And so if we go into, um, you know, for experiencing this in a relationship and it's at that point that we decide to go into a marriage, well, we need to realize that those intense feelings are going to dissipate. <laughs> and I, so in that, I need to think like, okay, if these intense feelings that I have for someone will in, in, will dissipate, what is there left afterwards? What is it, you know, about Brent that I am committing to? And I think what we need to do is really commit to not just that feeling of being in love, but commit to that person, to know that person's character, to know what are the qualities about that person mm -hmm. that are actually increasing. If I'm going to bind myself to another person for the rest of my life i need to do that very very thoughtfully and not based on those just on those feelings yeah and i think what happens too is people when we are especially when we are young we uh we believe that life is just great all the time and so if we're going to commit to love honor and cherish uh, somebody in sickness and in health uh, realizing that sickness and health things they happen and uh, so what does that understand? What does this look like for a lifetime? And this is why it's important to know uh, couples who are further down the road than we are that can help us. We also help uh, young, younger people, especially there's some research that's been done in the United States uh, and it's called sliding versus deciding. So what they see a lot is like when couples get together, they start dating and become sexual very fast. And then they start um, spending a lot of time together. So then they move in together and then they start doing things like buying a dog, buying furniture, things that make it harder to um, to break up or things that make it harder to really understand the person. Even to evaluate the relationship. Yeah, because they're, and so what they, so they call it sliding versus deciding because people, maybe they have a baby and they say we should get married or sometimes they just say, well, we've been together long enough, we should probably just get married. And so this isn't God's purpose to just get married. It's a like marriage is meant to honor God and to be a reflection of God's covenant with us. And so a lot of people are sliding into marriage instead of deciding and making good decisions saying, this is the person that I want to spend my life with and receive this more and more in the church. So. Wow, that is another deep perspective sliding not deciding mm -hmm. wow wow sliding not deciding mm -hmm. and so many things takes people to slide <clears throat> maybe they have given bad had sexual relationship and all those stuff are all serious please our viewers i believe we are taking notes sliding not deciding and i guess marriage is about decision not about something just push you or you guys you know slide into it 
thank you for that perspective. That's another deep one. And then we go to Nigeria quickly as we take uh, uh, the next question that we'll be taking now is... Um, okay, so uh, we go to Nigeria now. And uh, so from what the trickets just, you know, expatiated to us, could the lack of understanding of this last statement, you know, not entering marriage lightly or selfishly but responsibly in law, could this be traceable to some challenges in Christian marriages today? You know, lack of understanding in this particular statement. Can it be traceable to some challenges in Christian marriages today? Over to you, Ma. I'd like to agree with them on that, uh, on that side. Because most of our youth going into marriages today, they are not ready, not prepared. They don't know what it entails to go into marriage. Sometimes most of them are concerned about the wedding, the ceremony, all those things, the jingles around it. Remember one of my children in the law sometimes called me shortly after the marriage. Say, Mom, you didn't tell me marriage is as involving like this too. So I put in 10 hours of the day into making things work in this, this marriage and I'm getting fed up of it. I started laughing and say, you, if anybody tells you this secret will do marry at all, because I know that lady, she's not the type that wants to do anything uh, that is involving. So what we are saying is that there must be understanding of what we want to do, why we are going in there, what we want to achieve by going in there, the effort needed, the input must be explained to these youth before they go into it, because when you jump into things like that, you will obviously want to join, uh, jump out. I remember people who complaining about many issues that if they have been put through thoroughly before they go into marriage, it shouldn't have been an issue for them. Like, for instance, somebody complaining about cooking, somebody complaining about uh, the cleanliness of the house, and some of that little, little things that are part of marriage, they, most of them are not prepared for it. All they are out for is to have a, a glorious wedding. And after that, what comes out of it is none of their business. So I think our youth that are going into it now, the leaders will have to put in more effort. Not the, the jamboree, but the involvement. Those things that are in there for them to go and meet. And I believe if they are rightly tutored, if they are rightly instructed, many of them will be prepared. And these villages we are having in our marriage will be reduced to a, a, a drastic level. Thank you so Thank much, you Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. For well, that perspective, mm -hmm. and uh, you you can see, like she's talking from experience and interaction with the young people that goes unprepared in, into marriage. You know, saying that I don't know marriage is this involving, and seriously, that that is a key thing that marriage is involving. Last year, I remember there was a there uh, there was a quote that came from one of our guests. He said, "You cannot do marriage in prosy." I, I still remember last year. He said, "You can't do marriage in prosy." That a lot of people want to manage their their home in prosy, and see what mommy is saying now. That marriage is involving. Marriage is involving. That is also deep for us to know so when that question is say uh, that that line says that it's not something you enter to lightly or selfishly but responsibly and in love i guess that is the key thing marriage is involving thank you so much ma uh, for that perspective um we'll be going to the uh, uk again now so uh, for the next uh, uh question Okay, uh, so the next question is going to uh, the UK, as said. Now, we discover that there are some drafted lines of marriage, of marriage vows today for several, uh, for several reasons. There are different drafted lines in the marriage vows now. And uh, one reason that people claim is that the old lines are negative confessions or that they are highly committing. So we want to ask that, what is your own perspective on this, on some of these remodified lines? An example is that I will be together with you for better, for worse, in sickness and in health. What is your perspective, sir? Well, um, thank you very much. 
Let me quickly put something to Mama Abedjuibe's uh, answer. Is that okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Marriage is not to be taken selfishly or lightly. Well, if you look at what I said earlier, on the sixth day, God created the man and woman. And the early church, it was a sanctified institution. But a king arose, a king arose, who selfishly and uh, took marriage lightly by, you know, impregnating someone outside marriage. And because she, he thought is a king, you all know King James. And then ever since, that clause is a warning to people like King James, not to take marriage lightly, not to think that you can divorce here and go there. Not to think that you, you, you can do whatever you like and throw the woman away. And and so since then, that clause is like a check and balance. If you know you are not ready, don't go there and make mess of it. You know, the problem today again is the way uh, the Constantine, who, who, who turned Christianity to a national religion, he bastardized everything. And governments now begin to dictate how marriage should be. And then back to my question now, for better, for worse. I know there was a wedding I was to conduct in Chapel of Christ Light, Lagos. I'm able to be a pastor in one of the big, big Pentecostal church in Lagos, very close to the chapel. My other colleague, we do the counseling, then the last two counseling, I will take it over. And they came to report him to me that this man said he is not ready to declare for better for worse on the day of marriage. And I said, well, that's in the Pentecostal circle, the, all they know about God is good. And I said, well, as far as this liturgy in this chapel is concerned, if you are not ready to proclaim and declare for better, for worse for your wife, I'm not sure we are going to conduct it. The man went away. The summary of the story is that that marriage he went to do in another place did not last one year. For better, for worse, if you look at life, there's a proverb in Africa, there is no amount of your perfection about how you walk, your head must shake. There is no perfect marriage. I have this book. I don't know if you can see it. I wrote it to celebrate uh, Queen Elizabeth and uh, her husband, Philip, who passed away. Because they've allowed us to see what it takes to be for better, for worse. You know what? Queen Philip deny himself his own title in order to give support to the queen. Tell me, when your wife is in the labor room, do you know what's going to come out of it? You see, at times, most marriages today, they are turning, marriage is becoming mirage. Mirage because we have left the standard. A, we have left the standard of the purpose. We have left it. And you know what? For better, for worse, tells us that the spirituality, the good news of marriage, is about family life formed and shaped by Christian mission. And this is the art of evangelism. Evangelism is lacking today because married, Christian marriage is declining. Evangelism, when your soul today is declining because marriage is declining. Look at the story of uh, Susanna Wesley. That is the mother of John Wesley and Charles Wesley, the, the wife of Samuel Wesley. Had it been, Susanna did not stand for better, for worse. Oh, 
Samuel Wesley is one of the terrible ministers to marry. An alcoholic, uh, a debtor, who will sleep in the gutter. And you know there was a time they nearly burned their house because it was owing somebody in the community. But Susanna, because this is for better, for worse, she know what she signed, stood her ground, and through that, for better, for worse, Methodism, Wesley, the driver, came on board. I did being, Susanna Wesley said, look, I, I didn't sign for all this, I didn't even be a priest. Let me just sign away. We will not have the revival today. What am I saying here is uh, the modern idea and the cultural trend of free sex, mental loss, easy their divorce, is a drift to Christian view of marriage. This modernity, the enlightenment, even not only marriage, every sector of Christianity today, enlightenment has secularized them. So everybody is a king in his own rights. And we are one is a king, there is no direction. So when we talk about for better for worse, it's an act of eternal commitment. But that for better for worse is also based on a clause. Because that for better for worse if it's becoming violent and threat to life, that's where the Christian body comes in. But when you have not associated yourself with any Christian group, you only saw the man with a flashy car, you only saw the man with a flashy degree, and you think that is what determines a happy home, then you're already looking forward to for better, for destruction. So, for better, for worse, is a spiritual mm. call to discipleship. Mm. Discipleship is not a bread and butter affair. Marriage is about discipleship. Like I said to someone, if you are not ready to go to the school of forgiveness, the University of Forgiveness, don't go into marriage. I don't know how many times my wife has forgiven me you know, like I am, uh, I, I came from a place in Nigeria where Jesus started the Holy Communion. And uh, that side, men, men are very stingy with money. So, but if not for understanding, one cannot scale through. But my summary is good case of Susanna Wesley. That was an example of for better, for worse. So, I say again, I'm rounding up with this. For better, for worse, it's a signpost that marriage is spiritual. It's a call to evangelism. It's a call to discipleship. And it's, it's a call, listen to this, it's a call to spiritual formation. Listen, look at this paper I'm holding. The pro, this is the final product. This is the final product. But do you know the source of this product is from the forest. Mm -hmm. It's from the forest. When through mm -hmm. the sawmill, for better, for mm -hmm. worse, oh, mm -hmm. I will not, I will still be a paper. And today, that tree in the forest mm -hmm. has become somebody anybody can read all over the world. Mm -hmm. So, for better, for worse, is a call to discipline. For better, mm -hmm. for worse, is a call to accountability. Mm -hmm. For better, for worse, is a call to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. For better, for worse, is a call to humility. Mm -hmm. For better, for worse, is a call to be forced mm -hmm. a slave to other. Mm -hmm. Loving, having the interest of other before you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you so much, sir. Amen. So much to grab. So much to, to internalize in that submission. Marriage is spiritual mm. evangelism is declining because marriage is declining yes. marriage is a spiritual call to discipleship entering into marriage is entering into university of forgiveness <laughs> marriage is spiritual a call to spiritual formation wow yes, yes. these are deep insights 
which I want to believe uh, is going to last a long time in our hearts and the hearts of our viewers all over the world, wherever you are connecting. Now, based on that submission, before we go to the trickets, mm -hmm. I want us to pray. And this yeah. prayer is coming from one of the marriage in Oh, perfect love. We want to pray for that kind of perfect love that can help marriages all over the world. So please, let's pray along with this aim as we sing together. point in time for marriages that are struggling with earthly sorrows earthly sorrows we ask in this prayer that you will minister to every marriage that is going through earthly sorrow at this point in time in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen 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 we want to thank god for that session oh beloved that session is loaded and i tell you that is just the tip of the iceberg and that's why i want to don't miss part two this is just loaded marriage is a call to the university of forgiveness i tell you for better for worse is a call to discipleship you know it, it is a call to spiritual formation i mean several counsel is coming to us live and direct from this teacher they are there are deeper things that will take you, you know, years to go over, years to trust God to help you in, 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 you know, in becoming what God wants your marriage to be. And particularly those of us who are not married yet, this is a great opportunity for you to know what the Lord is saying about marriage to know what the foundation you're supposed to lay for your marriage before you enter into it. I want to encourage you to take opportunity to listen to this session all over and over again. You will see deeper thoughts, deeper impression. Marriage is evolving, involving. Marriage is evolving. You can't do marriage in prosy. I tell you, these are deeper counsels, spiritual formation call to discipleship. Marriage cannot be taken selfishly. Wow. 
these are deeper dimension that you know has been brought into into marriage issue from this discourse i, I love it also when brent and, and celestine was talking of the fact that a lot of people slide into marriage sliding not deciding people slide into marriage because uh, well maybe something happened unfortunately you gave somebody uh you impregnated somebody and because of that you just turned it into marriage without taking a decision to look at what you are entering into you know maybe you have just been living with this person and you felt you are compatible and things appear to be going well between the two of you just said let's just turn it into marriage sliding into marriage young people listening to that you cannot slide into marriage it's a thing to take decision about it's a thing that needs to involve god these are serious deep cancer i can't just mention them enough i want to encourage you to listen all over again to this teaching at your own spare time it will be there on our youtube channel and even on our Facebook page, the Lord is going to help your marriage. The Lord is going to help you singles to decide right, to take decision, not to slide. And you need to be careful. A lot of things can make somebody to slide. You know, you can slip off. Things can happen. But it's important that you be careful and come back to your senses and put things right. Don't just turn it to say, okay, let's just cover it up with marriage. No, it doesn't work that way. In marriage is something of a lifetime, and there's, there won't be a way of jumping in and jumping ourselves. We are doing it outside the will of God. And that is load of counsel that God has brought to us by this uh this this discourse it, it's loaded in my spirit and as we have prayed by that aim that every sorrow every marriage that is passing through one sorrow or the other every form of earthly sorrow so many things bring sorrow into marriage it can be finance it can be children you have been waiting a long time you know ch children are not coming it can be in-law impute it can be job your job it, so many things can bring at least sorrow to the joy that you have in your marriage i'm trusting the lord to minister to every issue that brings sorrow into your marriage the hand of the lord the covenant that god is making with us today we come upon your marriage and every sorrow shall disappear in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I release the power of God from this altar to everyone connecting to the covenant you are making with us today and our generation and our descendant. By the word of the Lord, the joy of God will come upon every sorrow in your marriage in the name of Jesus. Are you at the sound of my voice? You are struggling with separation and divorce. I receive grace for the two of you for reconciliation for understanding in the name of the lord jesus paraventure your marriage was a marriage that you slide you slide into you slip into it was not a decision you're already into it and pray god almighty we visit that marriage restore the scripture saying the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do every faulty foundation in marriages that are the sound of my voice and you have brought it to the lord the lord will go right into the foundation of the issue and bring restoration bring correction in the name of jesus for every single at the sound of my voice i'm praying for mercy of god that you will not you will not you will not go into error you will not you will not just go in without the understanding you will not yes remember the, the when they were talking about the purpose of marriage may you not miss your purpose in marriage in the name of may you not miss your purpose in marriage in the name of the lord jesus thank you father for hearing us we give you praise because you are the lord in jesus unfailing name we are praying. Amen. My heart is heavy, just like pumping out prayers and what have you. So whatever the situation, you might want to need more counsel, you want to speak with us, or you want to be connected to any of these, uh, our guests that have talked today, yes, you can send us an uh, email through uh, email, and you can throw it in the chat before we conclude. We might be able to, you know, share a link with you, but you can send it to the Alarm Broadcast at gmail.com i'll be delighted to link you up or to share with you pray with you or counsel you by the reason of whatever the situation is that is going on in your marriage and i tell you god has something great something mighty something joyful when he created marriage the intention of god 
is for us to have a wonderful companion and enjoy his blessings in marriage. So trusting the Lord for things to go well with you and it shall be well. For every marriage that is suffering violence, yes, if your marriage is going through violence, I pray the, 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 the spirit of the Lord will minister to every source of violence and it shall be quenched in the name of Jesus. And don't forget, you need your local church. You need your local church. It's important to you submit the leadership of your marriage, you know, to your local church so that they can guide you. And when there are challenges, people can pray along with you and encourage you in that dimension. Please, beloved, don't miss the second part of this session. And it's going to be another wonderful time. And let me quickly, by way of announcement, remind you of a, a regular broadcast that comes to your way every day. Uh, we have a daily benefit that comes your way, 6 30 a.m. CST. On all our platform, don't miss that session. It's always a blessing to people and to us, even in the studio. And it, it, it sometimes turns into another prayer session after daily benefit or even in the studio. Please don't miss it. And you can share it with many other people on the on your connection or network. Then Sunday broadcast, which we are just rounding off at this time, comes your way 12 p.m. CST. And by next Sunday, we'll come your way again as well round up this session that we started uh, today. And then don't forget pages of healing. We just add one last term. Uh, this week, this week, we just add one this week. And the next session is going to be in the month of August. And that's the third Thursday in the month of August. Always a powerful session where we trust God for the dimension of healing. And we are studying through what God did through uh, the apostles in their days as the witnesses that Christ left to convey and to continue with the power that has released for us in our generation. So these are means of grace that comes to you on this platform and it's always a blessing to be here together with you. So I want to encourage you once again, I'll be looking forward to have you with me again uh, on this broadcast to continue this session of teaching. Thank you for joining me on today's Sunday broadcast. God bless you, God sustain your marriage. And if you are not there yet, God will give you a joyful home. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.